Hi, my name is Rich McHugh, and I'm going to be leading this workshop on an introduction to interactive and nonlinear stories and guided interviews with Twine. I'm just going to show you a little bit about some of what you can do with Twine. So, for example, we've got a story here uh, called Nappy's Proposal, and I'll just show you what it looks like from the reader perspective. So you can see it's a story that you read, and when there's a different colored text, you can click on that to move forward in the story and read through it. I'm not going to read all of these until we get to a little bit of an interesting part. In a second, you can see there's a background image. There's a back arrow so that you can go back if you'd like to. But when we get to... Here, for example, this is a Cree word, I believe, and if we click on it, it gives you the English translation of it, and you can click on it to go back and forth. And then this is what I wanted to get to to show you. These are different uh, lines in the story with she, and if we click on it, it reveals what uh, the full line is. So she was the most attractive woman in camp. She was respected by the rest of the women. She had received spiritual powers from su some supernatural being. She received power to be brave, skillful. She, I won't read all of them, but you get the idea. Now here's another Cree word, and if we click on it, that means crushing meat. And then we click here to go on to the next passage. Now let's look at what this looks like from the editor perspective if you were creating this story. So if we click on this here, you can see that... Uh, the story is quite linear. This is the, no, that isn't it. This is the passage that has all of the she ones, and you can see how that was coded. If we go back here, you can see that just going from one, um, one passage to another is pretty straightforward. But you can do more complicated things if you want to. Just go back to the slides here. Uh, another thing you can do with uh, passages is have background uh, sound or music. And I thought this would might be a little bit gimmicky at first, but it actually can be quite effective. So there was a story I was reading, and one passage took place in a bar. So they had some background ambiance, bar noise with the clink of glasses, and people sort of murmured conversations of background. And it really worked quite well to set the mood. There was a, a movie for a few years ago on Netflix called Bandersnatch, which was sort of a choose-your-own-adventure movie. And I didn't realize it at the time, but it actually was prototyped using Twine. So they laid out the story, figured out different paths that you could take, and then they put, you had to use different tools to make the Netflix uh, video. But um, it's quite cool to know that Twine was the tool that they used to do that. And if we look at this here, you can see all of the different paths that you can take through the movie. And I did watch the movie, although I probably only saw a quarter or a third of it, given all the different um, options and paths you could take. And I, I didn't spend enough time to see most of the, the video, it looks like. Here's an example of a Twine poem. I'm just going to click play here. And the way it works is each line has two words that you can click on. And depending on which word you click on, you'll get a different uh, line next coming up in the poem. So here we've gone through one version of the poem, and I'll refresh the uh, the story, and then I'll click a different line so that you can see that in the end, other than the first line, the poem is completely different than the previous one. Just another interesting use case for Twine that might not be obvious. You could also do guided interviews. So this was from a few years ago, and uh, it was to help people figure out what type of laptop they should buy. This is what the editor interface looks like. So here's the first buyer's guide that we saw back there. And then the first question is about budget. Next question is about preference for operating system, Windows, Mac, or Chrome. And then the last, the last option is whether weight or screen size is more important to you. And then it'll give you some uh, suggestions on what would be a good choice for you for a, uh, for a laptop. There is one, uh, one key concept that's really important to know about Twine, and that is that you really 
that it is browser-based, but unlike Google Docs, for example, which saves everything in the cloud, everything in Twine is actually saved on your hard drive in cookies. Uh, so if you clear your cookies at any point while you're making a story or after you make the story, you'll actually delete what you've saved uh, on your hard drive because, uh, like I said, the stories are are saved in cookies or the Twine stories are saved in cookies. So please don't uh, clear your browser. Other key thing is, I don't know why, but for some reason, Twine does not work well in the Safari web browser. It will work, but weird things will start to happen. So we strongly recommend you use uh, Firefox, Chrome, or the Microsoft Edge browser because they uh, tend to work better with Twine for, like I said, I'm not sure why, but they do. We also have workshop badges that are available if you're interested. You just need to complete your story and then email it to the address at the bottom there and we'll issue you a badge. But just really quickly, I'm going to show you, um, see here. Yeah, I'm just going to quickly show you how you create a passage. So I'm just going to create a story called test. I'm going to double click on this passage and then I'm going to go, this is a very bad story. And let's say I want to make a passage that goes to home. So that's part one choice you can make. So I'll just put double square brackets around home and then double square brackets around work. I'll end with a period. And if I click X to close, you'll see that a home passage has been created in a work passage. So if I double click here, this is home. And now I'd like to cook dinner or watch TV. And then I'll put double square brackets around cook dinner. So that'll be a new passage that appears or watch TV. And if I close this, you can see there are now passages for cook dinner and watch TV. And I can do the same thing with work. Um, I'll work on my computer or watch TV. So the My Computer will create a new passage. But the Watch TV, because I've already got a Watch TV, it'll, it'll actually, oops, it'll actually link to that other passage that I created uh, previously. So if I close here, you'll see that there's the My Computer, but because there was already a Watch TV, it's linked to that passage uh, just by typing it in. So that's the basics of how to start writing an uh, choose your own adventure story in Twine. And uh, I hope this is helpful. And I hope you have as much fun as I've had creating stories and other things in Twine. Good luck.